Welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Buzz Podcast. Uh, we're happy that you're joining us today as we continue to talk about lots of different things in the world uh, of faith and uh, life. My name is Father Daniele, and I'm joined, as always, by Josh Sullivan. Hello. Welcome to you. Thank you. And Matt Van Milligan. Hello. Matt, welcome. You guys have way too much fun before we go. Yeah. <laughs> and, we were talking uh, Home Alone. We, we were talking about Home Alone and the two crooks. And, that's, we kinda, and I just realized one of the things why Marv I was laughing. Marv and Harry. And Harry. Yeah. yeah. Except that we call each other those names. And it's quite funny because one of them is short, stout, and bald. <laughs> and the other guy's tall Joe hair. Pesci. I mean, it's, yeah, exactly. Joe Pesci. So we call each other by accident the right names. That's right. <laughs> Good thing we're not talking about Joe Pesci today. No. Right? We're talking about other things uh, that might make you want to go home alone. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> you know, last week, Josh, you brought up a uh, conversation you've had with people in your class, you know? Yeah. And I was thinking about the same thing. I was having a conversation with friends of mine. Mm -hmm. And these are friends I've had for a long time. And uh, I was... You know, obviously, I'm I'm the priest. <laughs> and they're they're and they knew you before you were a priest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it, it's just funny. Like I love them to death, and uh, they're great people. And yet, uh, the practice of the practice of faith is not there, mm -hmm. right? And all of them baptized Catholic. All of them hmm. baptized Catholic, and and not practicing today. And the more I spent time with them, the more I engaged in conversation. You know, just hung out. Uh, you know, I there's this there's this um, I don't know I I don't mean lifestyle in the sense of like swanky lifestyle, but I mean it's just the rhythm of their life that things are going well. Yeah, like they have some of them have children and schedules, and the kids are off to school, and the kids are in hockey, and the kids are doing this, and you know, and they have this routine of life, and they're off to work, and their wives work, and and just faith just doesn't fit in there. Like the mm -hmm. practice of faith doesn't fit in there. And they would say that they're having a great time in life. And I would say the same thing, that mm -hmm. they're happy, right? Mm -hmm. And my question, my reflection on that was, how do you move people who are in this state of life to even come to appreciate the gift of faith that they've been given? Mm -hmm. For example, in this case, they've been baptized. Mm -hmm. In some people's cases, maybe they're not, they've are not they not been baptized, right? But in this case, they've been baptized. So how do you come to get them to appreciate the gift that they have? And then, maybe I was overthinking it a little bit, because then you start to think of, like, you know, people in, our, people in our parish who they have family members, the same thing. Yeah. Like, they're to. off to church each Sunday. They have people in their household that stay at home. Mm -hmm. uh, they're off to church on Sunday. They have children, grandchildren who stay at home. Then I think of the kids I work with in the schools. Like mm -hmm. our elementary school are full of kids. There's hundreds of kids in the three elementary schools I work in. How many of them are going to church on Sunday? And yet there's this gift of baptism. And and I would say that most of these people would say that their lives are great and they're living. They would say they're living fulfilled lives. They're they're busy. They're active. They're happy. They're yeah. doing these things. And yet there's what we would say a significant if not maybe the fullness of life there missing Present. from their life it's, it's missing it's very hard I, I heard an analogy one time and i think i've used it on the podcast it's it's like trying to describe someone who sees only in black and white what color tv looks like you know if you if someone only worked looked in back it, how would you describe those words to someone who can only see black and white it's very hard it's a, you mm. you can't explain that to people um, that that you could see in color, you could see in 4K color t TV. Like it's 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 a very hard thing to describe to people that don't have any clue. And I think you have like what you're talking about now. We we've fallen away from. I have I have aunts and uncles um, that were Catholic at one time and then have fallen away from the church in, in a different way. But they almost seem to have a um, um, a negative feeling towards the church okay okay yeah. but but then but then you have this new generation of people i'm going to say uh that were baptized but never their parents never raised them catholic and so they were they they consider themselves catholic but they've never actually practiced the faith so they actually don't know mm -hmm. what they're missing for a lot of part right they might have gone to catholic school they might have gone they've been baptized maybe did first communion that kind of thing like they did the rituals at that point but they didn't um follow through with their faith or they didn't they didn't fulfill in their faith and how do we tell them hey 
you're missing color TV when they think black and white is so great. Exactly. Yeah. That's the question. It's like, how do you tell them? Like, obviously, as people of faith, we would say, well, it starts with us in prayer. We pray for them. We show our example. Mm -hmm. We share our witness. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at the early apostles, uh, the early Christians. (laughs) You know, you look at the early Christians and the apostles, and they've shared their faith and there was people out there who had no interest in even being people of God. They didn't, yeah, they didn't even know who Jesus, when you said Jesus, Jesus they didn't know what the name of Jesus meant. And then today, there's this large, significant, large amount of people who, I don't know, maybe have zero interest. Yeah, and I think, like, what you were saying about like in, in the case of and, and you, you can kind of break this down generally generationally uh as well that like people who have decided to depart from organized religion or like for them religion yeah. has become a bit of a bad word and um you know again you have <laughs> i'm spiritual but i'm not religious <clears throat> exactly or, or you have kind of a reasonable kind of uh criticism of individuals who represent institutions yeah. or that, that people distance themselves from the institution mm-hmm. uh, but you know they'll say you know i'm still faithful i'm mm-hmm. still i still have my belief but I'm, i i don't you know subscribe to the beliefs of this institution or this group or this yeah. religion or i don't i see it as you know empty ritual mm-hmm. um and when we were talking before uh we talked about like kind of the uh, yeah m- maybe i come at it from uh, a different perspective because i was you know using yeah. the, the black and white kind of color um, analogy that you know i i noticed in my life like a lack it was like when, when my eyes were open to kind of the sacramental life mm-hmm. um that sparked an interest in in, in faith which you know ultimately led to like w- what's um i don't want faith to be something that i can just invent and change and reinvent like there, there needs to be some underlying truth um, and that led me to you know a, an appreciation um uh, of of religion of of you know practicing my faith in a community because mm-hmm. um, again a, a lot of people will try and, and uh, reduce you know religion to just empty ritual yeah. um, institutional worship um, when really it's you know a community really working out um, the practice of faith you know together yeah yeah the, like so you would say maybe there's this underlying curiosity. Yeah, m- m- more than that, or like uh, the the curiosity, I would say, was was fulfilled um, yeah. in kind of my involvement in you, you know Protestant Protestant churches. That it's like it, but it was uh, it was very vaguely described. Okay. Or that, and there was there was um, enough kind of difference in difference in theology that like you would have a disagreement about even kind of who Jesus was and what like why he came and how important that should be and you know what that means for me what that, we talked about last week what that means for marriage and what that means for family and like the black and white color and like what this actually um and the implications of this and how i understand my own identity um and my responsibility towards other people yeah. and it's like if there's a disagreement there there's no real um way to arbitrate between those and you have okay i'm forming this community i'm forming this community and you have that kind of distancing or lack of unity um and for me kind of the the fulfillment of or the solution to that problem and you know the the unity that christ calls us to is for us to be part of the same body the same sacramental body which is you know his body um and again that's that's being um, a part of the church and striving to live uh in a sacramental way yeah the image of, of being part of the same body right like this is what we're called to, right? And I think there's two aspects, maybe two. There's probably more, but I'll focus on two, I guess. Number one is our responsibility. Like, we're missing a large part of the body of Christ, mm-hmm. right? Like, we're missing yeah. a large population of people who make up the body of Christ. Yeah. So that should concern us, right? And I'm guilty of it as well, right? Like, not not doing everything I can to reach out to people, and on the flip side, what's the incentive or what's the motivation or what's what's moving or propelling yeah. people to even want to be part 
I think of the body of Christ yeah. today. I think that's the thing that we got to understand is that by telling them that you're going to get to heaven, well, if they don't believe in heaven, that's not a exactly. that's not a changing thing. But I think like, what talking about salvation, or talking about heaven, talking about these things, they're like. Mm. But 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 you're gonna see red on this TV. You're gonna see blue on this TV. <laughs> yeah. They have no idea. What's red? And exactly. It just yeah. doesn't make sense. So you have to come down to a base knowledge. I think what I think everybody. I mean, because we're created humans, and we go back to what our faith teaches us. And our faith teaches us that we were made in God's image, and then we sinned. So there was this hole, this gap, this 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 thing that happened in uh, we call it original sin. Uh, that was placed on our lives from that time of Adam and Eve uh, till now. And the only way that we can kind of get across that divide is by God. So taking that theory, taking that idea into into uh, reality, realizing that we do feel empty. What, it doesn't matter who you feel, who you are, there is something missing. And now you don't want to go and like be like, hey, something's missing in your life. Yeah. No, but but I think what you show them is 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 living out your faith. Uh, so the two ways. One is living out your faith, living out the fullness of your faith. So that means um, having your rosary in your car. That means having, you know, like uh, uh, bringing your Bible on a sleepover. That means like th- those kinds of things as you're going. The, that's those ways of just standing out that you don't even realize. You're just living your Catholic faith or you're living your faith to the fullest. What they will realize, two things. One, just through your actions alone, they can start to see there's something I'm missing here. There's something that's important here. There's something, right? To, to, uh, to, yeah. to the other part is maybe pointing out. I mean, I'll challenge anybody who listens to this right now. I bet you you're feeling, even if you are Christian, even if you're Catholic, um, if you're Catholic and you're good practicing Catholic, then you know how to be filled because you felt that fullness before. You've seen that full color TV before. And if you haven't, I'm going to tell you right now, it's the Eucharist. Um, go to adoration. Sit down in prayer. Just offer your life to God. That's how you do it, okay, if you're Catholic. If you're not Catholic, you might not understand that. Um, but, but, if you're not, I'm going to challenge you. Start that conversation with God because the only way you're going to fill that God-sized shaped hole in your there's nothing. You can throw TV, you can throw hockey, you can throw dance, you can throw you can throw all these things and keep yourself so busy. I think a lot of times we see p- people as successful as busy, right? Oh well, look at they got it all together. They're doing this, 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 this. But sometimes we are busy in our life, not because because if we slow down and stop and think, we're hurting. Does that make sense? It does make a lot of sense. I think especially today it makes sense yeah. because we fill the gap yeah. in our life mm-hmm. with such what I'll call a waste of time, garbage, yeah. trash, sure. what I would say. Yeah. But, right? Like the second we have a serious thought to think about something, yeah. it's like you you grab your phone yeah. and you're yeah. scrolling through. Turn on a movie in the background. Uh, oh, yeah. Always have oh, music there's going. There's TikTok too. on or there's something you're scrolling. Like, and we don't give ourselves time. Like that's almost like our... Um, that's almost like our uh, go-to when, when something serious is going on in our brain. Like, oh, let's go here first. Yeah. It's very true. It's very true. And when you're able to do that with technology, it, you know what's really funny? One of the things I've, I'm noticing, because I'm trying to do these workout apps and some other certain things like that. I see it working. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I see. Is the beard growing bigger? Your abs are coming to the shirt. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, but, the, but as I'm doing these things, one of the things that always promotes almost every single exercise regime that I'm, that I'm looking at or going through and stuff is it workout, workout, because, and then mindfulness they call it yes have you seen that like there, there's apps on phones and there's things like where you need to take a minute just to breathe for a yes. minute just to slow everything down you're not paying attention to technology you know just just calm your mind like they're recognizing that there's an importance here now we would call it in the christian faith now pray connect with god like go and connect to the source and the, the being who loves you and created you but but they're saying like oh, there's a minute you have to slow down all this technology is not good all this busyness is not good for you you have to kind of get away from that a little bit and there's there's a lot of things so but again i think i say i realize this actually in my own life um we did exodus 90 uh, and it's a program for for people to go through if they want and we challenged ourselves matt you went with it yeah. we did it with me um and it, there's a lot of crazy things that you do on this is this this thing uh but one of the things that i realized you don't do any music or tv for 90 days you don't eat snacks you, you work out every day you you uh, shower you don't have warm hot showers you can only have like lukewarm cold showers uh and the idea was self-sacrifice but not in a in a in a painful way but more just like like not watching too much tv was good for you you know yeah what i realized was i always had music and tv on 
And one of the breakthroughs I had probably in the first couple of weeks from from not having that music and stuff on, and one of the other parts of that, why I'm looking at Matt is because you're supposed to share that with the guys at, that you were doing this with. And so we had an open group discussion with a couple of guys that we were doing this with. And one of the, my breakthroughs was realizing I put music on and I put TV on in the background. I do all these things. I always have something going. And one of the biggest reasons is because I don't want to think. I don't want to sit mm. and I don't want, and, and part of that was for me to realize I didn't feel good about myself and I didn't feel about good about who I was. And then I had to tackle that in a, um, through prayer through, but I had to tackle. So there was a hole in my life, even though I was a Catholic and even though I was going to mass and I was doing some things, there was still a deeper hole there. There's a deeper problem. And I brought, and I really, I wasn't doing my daily prayer time. I wasn't doing adoration. I wasn't doing the things that I needed in my life to fill that hole. And once I started, once I realized that I was putting on TV to keep my mind busy enough to not think about the bad, to think about the stains on my shirt, if you will. Think about how I wasn't, how I was feeling lonely, depressed, whatever. And so turning off that and making myself turn that off. I mean, I, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that existed until two or three weeks. I'm going, why am I, why do I, like, I have music on all the time. Why am I so addicted to music? And I had to really take that to prayer and think about it. And, and I realized that was the thing. So keeping yourself busy, so busy that you can't even think, so that you're happy to have five minutes alone with yourself at night, you know, so that you can, but even then you have your phone with you, so you're scrolling through social media. Yeah. Those things, a lot of times it, there's this deeper, but that deeper issue a lot of times can be filled with going to God hmm. and God can direct you in that path. Does that make sense? Of course it does yeah. to me. Okay. Uh, again, you know, I, I would say from the other perspective, yeah, does, that make is, sense? does that make sense? Like would someone say, oh, well, Josh, yeah. thanks for pointing out the <laughs> hole in my life or hole in my, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'm going to jump on board with prayer. Like, so I think what you said before, you said that was really important. Th those two things you said go together. By journeying with people. Yes. Right? To journey it's not just people. pointing out the hole. No, no. And, and especially yeah. not pointing out the hole. What, yeah. I mean, living out your faith and then seeing the hole. I mean, pointing out the hole, sure, a little bit. But, uh, but, but living out it and seeing the hole in their life by seeing the fullness in yours. One of the things we were looking, I was looking up a bunch of studies for religion. Like, what is, why is religion so important to us? And there's a lot of stuff out there. And there's a lot of theories out there. And not all of them are like Christian or Catholic or from a faith perspective, let's say. Uh, but one of the things that they have in common um, re religion, um, people that are religious, people that exercise their faith, if you will, that practice rituals and stuff, they are on a whole a lot more happier, not just a little bit, but significantly yeah. happier. They live significantly longer. They have an outlook on life that's significantly, um, less depressing. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and this is, this is from a non faith filled type, type of background. All these studies I was going, this is something that came across all the time. So like it was, it was crazy. So if you want proof that maybe there's a hole and maybe that it can be filled, look at where are the people that feel fulfilled? Where are the people that are actually happy? Where are the people that not fake happy, but like actually joyful, actually feel full, actually feel loved, feel that. I know that there are times in my life I don't feel that way. And I know that I get that through faith and I get, and I get, I, I get filled through going to the Eucharist particularly. That's why I'm Catholic. Going and sitting in adoration is how I get filled. Sitting in daily prayer time. I can't get to adoration. Sitting in daily prayer time. God's the only thing that can fill that hole. And I know that because I've been to the bottom. I've been to the pit. And I know that the only way I was able to get out of it was going to prayer. You know? And so that's what I'm saying. I'm a pretty happy guy. I have a lot of fun in life. Um, and But I know that I'm starting feeling. My wife starts commenting that I'm not quite getting there. Normally, my wife and I have this thing where we, like, if she's, if she's, if she's acting a certain way or if I'm acting a certain way, she's like, have you been doing your prayer time? And I'm like, oh. No, that's been lacking. Yeah, okay, that's what's going on here. I'm feeling like it's, it's, it's not like I miss one prayer time and all of a sudden I'm in a bad mood that day. But it's, it's, it's a series. You eventually slip and like a week or two goes by and you haven't done prayer time or you haven't done a, um, a meaningful prayer time. I, I pray all the time, every day. I'm always with Jesus. Not that type of prayer, but an actual meaningful prayer time where you sit down, you listen to God, maybe read the Bible a little bit. Ask God, what do you want to say to me right now? Because that relationship is what makes you whole. That's what we got ripped away from in the in the in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, like that, right? We we got torn from that garden, from that perfect relationship with Christ. I mean, with God. So through Christ, we can have that perfect relationship again. We have to go back to prayer. So where does someone find time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have a couple kids. You have this schedule. You got this routine. You both have jobs. The kids are in dance and hockey and you know, all that stuff. Like. Sure, what you say sounds nice. Yeah. So now, where do I start to 
to make it happen in my life? Like, where does that happen? It's it's very difficult for, um, especially people who, again, are maybe filling the gap with yeah. things like comfort and entertainment um, and any kind of distraction. Like, there, there is that kind of active distraction. There's mm-hmm. like, 100%. I'm, I'm staying this busy so that I don't slow down yeah. to think. Um, but for a lot of people, like, that's that's the end goal. You know, that's what the human Life thing is, is for. Um, that it's like, okay, if, if your main still of, busy a lot till you die, <clears throat> just stay busy long enough till you die. <laughs> yeah. But like for, you know, again, previous generations who didn't have the luxury of constant comfort or constant entertainment, you know, they were faced regularly with the fact of their mortality that mm-hmm. were that, um, and a, a, we were saying kind of what can we do? Um, that a lot of times this, this isn't something that we can just kind of um, shut yeah, down. shout yeah. shout into people or um, that it's like you can walk alongside people and then something may happen in their life that cause like gets them to slow down and ask some big questions about you know what the human what the human person is for um, it's like yeah uh, an example in my life is that again someone is in this um, everything is great kind of attitude um, and then a- as an adult um, their parents marriage fell apart mm-hmm. Um, that it's like it caused them to kind of reevaluate like up until that point they thought everything was fine they thought they were living life the way that you know life should be lived um, and you know something that they thought was you know foundational to them. but it turns out that their parents just weren't interested in being together anymore um, and they and they split up and it was like okay well ha- what is marriage like what is so it caused them to ask questions like yeah, okay questions. what's what's marriage in kind of um, like a modern secular perspective what does what does the church say about marriage mm-hmm. that like is there something deeper is is it an actual thing or is it just kind of a a social legal thing and then like that led them down the road of thinking about marriage as a sacrament and it was like okay well if marriage is a sacrament like it, it was an inroad to considering like the the sacrament the, the fullness of the sacramental life but again sometimes it takes that type of event that type of kind of earth-shaking wake-up call um to, to get people to ask those big questions. And yeah, it's very difficult when people are fully immersed in comfort and entertainment. Another thing to say about that is that like, <clears throat> when you're looking at, again, you can make a case for um, like the pragmatic benefits of religion or, yes, um, yeah. you know, the, the role that religion has served historically. Um, there's uh, an essay uh, by a guy named uh, Jay Budashevsky, and it's called Why There Are No Hittites on the Streets of New York. Um, that it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, and it's like, it's, it's, it's a funny uh, joke that's like, um, uh, he looks at Judaism, but specifically the Ten Commandments as, you know, uh, communal knowledge passed on in a structured kind of, you would say, religious way like through generations but you know the um the the life message that was that's passed on um is something that is valuable for society um Mm -hmm. and is becomes kind of the legal framework for western civilization um that you know the date the people who kind of day to day are working towards their own comfort their own entertainment just take for granted take for granted as kind of baseline expectation for um you know the conditions of life but again that 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 came through generations and generations and generations of people who were committed to this understanding of, you know, what a marriage is. You know, you shouldn't steal things from other people. <laughs> that, like, these are the building blocks of society that now we just kind of assume as part of a, a democratic, de- uh, yeah. Um, but that's that's exactly, I think, the point. As, as you're talking, I, I'm thinking about that. Like, at one point, you're right, there was less distraction, like you said. There was less things to get caught up in. But at one point, the church was the source of people's, like, the place that people went for help. Mm-hmm. Like, if people needed counsel, the they church went. was the place to go. Yeah. There weren't psychiatrists around okay. or, you know, as much as there are today, or social, there weren't social workers or mental health specialists or yeah. all these different things. The church was very much a, a, a part of the fabric of society, right? Even a spoke in the, I mean, not even a spoke in the wheel, but like the actual hub of the wheel, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and like dances were at the church hall. Yeah. Socials were at, yeah. on the church yard for the picnic. Like think the like communities rallied around the church and, mm-hmm. and the church was very much a part of people's lives. Yeah. Whereas slowly and surely these services started getting, like look at the Catholic schools. Yeah. You know, they were run by the Catholic church. 
and by the nuns and the priests. Yeah, by the nuns and the priests. And today they're run by the government. Yeah, right. So like slowly and surely, the the church uh, was removed from the healthcare. Mm-hmm. Um, you know all these things, and then uh, you start to get used to a society without the church. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Because everywhere you went, yeah, it was like oh well, thanks for the service, Father. You and you saw the church working. But I think there's a problem on both sides. One, people got used to seeking uh, solace other places, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because anytime you got a service from the church, whether it was food or counsel yeah. or social or whatever, it, it also had that spiritual aspect to mm-hmm. it. So you were you were. But on the other side, the church just got used to not offering that. Yeah, I think and, that's and a big part. Stepped aside from it. Whereas, like, I'm trying to tell you or you or people at home, like, you know, you need to be a witness of your faith. You need to invite people. You need to be the people who, like, all these people who are who might have that hole in their life that yeah. you're talking about. Like, we can help repair that hole, or we can we have we have Christ who can help heal those wounds, or even if you don't know you have them. But at the same time, we've gotten used to sitting on the sideline. Yeah, it was like like even my example Not going of friends. Out. Yeah, you know, like I was like, wow. Ah. How much can I harp on them? Yeah. You know, well, it's like, yeah. well, you know, and, and if the message is that vital to me, which it is to me, like Christ is life, like yeah. Christ is, is the beginning, the end, you know, well, maybe I should harp. Yeah. And yeah. it's like almost that has seeped into the Christian understanding. Well, the church has stepped back from offering these mm-hmm. things. Christians have stepped back from offering these things. And now if I were to say to someone, well, you know, if you're ha- if you, if you need a social worker, come see Father Daniele at the church. People would be like, "What? What's he gonna say?" <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Whereas, like, that's the sort of things the church used to be about. Just as one example, yeah. but those are the you know that was the norm. It's kind of been ripped apart of the reality of people's lives. Now, part of that might come too with consumerism and all that kind of, because I feel like a lot of times now we go to church as a consumer. Sure, Does that makes sense. Not as an active participant. I put my envelope in the basket. And you give me the Eucharist. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, or you give me redemption because I paid you. You know what I mean? And that's like that's kind of why like churches started breaking off a long time ago, right? Yeah. But like, but that's that's kind of what we've yeah. become a part of now. So kind of get, taking that step back and and being active disciples. Active disciples doesn't mean putting your thing in the Eucharist and sitting back. And it means that you got to get. It's like being an active bodybuilder, if you think of it, because uh, we watched that show was a hundred physical. Uh, a physical 100 on Netflix. Um, and I it's, didn't watch it. <laughs> I watched it. Uh, but it was just a bunch of physical people um, competing to see who's the best and who's the strongest and all that kind of he stuff. He had it on on the church hall wall. <laughs> I, I didn't, actually. Some of the teens did, but I, I was watching it. Um, so the, the uh, But in doing that, well, like, if, if, if you're going to be the... If, you are, if you're striving to be a bodybuilder, if that's your goal... You, People can tell I'm not striving to do that right now. <laughs> I'm not striving to be a bodybuilder. Why? Because you can see it. If you're striving to be an active disciple of Christ, and which is what we're supposed to, mm-hmm. we're called to be Christians, active disciples, right? Not consumers, active disciples. If I'm working that muscle, if I'm, uh, uh, then I'm actually going out and doing it. And you can see it. You can see evidence of it. Like I said, I don't look like a bodybuilder. I'm not trying to be a bodybuilder. I'm not working towards that goal. If I was, hopefully you'd be able to see and look at that and be like, oh, yeah, well, he, he looks like he works out. Like that looks like a really, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You'd be able to see some significant evidence that I'm there. So I think what we have to do is flip the church on its head a little bit. Um, not the church, sorry. The members of the church in the, on their head because we were so used to being able to be consumers. Just being, oh, well, I'll just go do this. I'll go do this. I'll go. I don't need the church in my life. What we don't realize is. But I, I would argue that. It's one of the, in recent history. Yes, yeah. that's how it is to be Christian. Yeah, like in the early yeah. church, you didn't sit back and be a Christian. You were like celebrating mass underground and like or like you, you're like, actively you were hiding. being a December. You, a were, disciple. you were yeah. secretly sharing the message of Jesus because yeah. if you got caught, boom, you're, you're done. Dead. And then throughout the centuries, the same thing. Even when Christianity was illegal, like the the wars that sort of broke out. Even in the last 500 years, when when the Christian message came to North America, it was not easy. No, um, you know, even look at uh, in the World Wars, uh, like yeah. in, you know, the, the, look at Saint Maximilian Kolbe as a Catholic mm-hmm. yeah. priest getting right into the uh, concentration, concentration camps. camps. Yeah. Like it, it's never been easy to be a Christian. And today, maybe you're right. Maybe Christians have have gotten a little too comfortable, and because of that comfort, people have sort of stepped aside. When I see 
when I see Christians um, really living the Catholic faith, yeah, it's really appealing to me. It's like, yeah. wow, these are good people, or yeah. like I want to be around them. And maybe we just don't have enough of those witnesses, right? Because yeah. it's like, you know, when there's a bunch of guys hanging around having a beer, it's like, well, oh yeah, you were baptized Catholic, I was baptized Catholic, cool, yeah. But when that's the end of your faith practice, it's like, well, other people, like you kind of pick up what other people are doing. Yeah. You, get, you see what I'm saying? Like, I think maybe it's time for us to be better witnesses. Living it out and not being, sh- not shying away from our faith. Yeah. Not, not shying away when someone says, hey, are you going to, like, like you're going to Sunday mass. Yeah. Like I actually, so yeah. I, I gotta be honest with you. One of the things that's hardest for me, I realized this well in the last two, three years is just admitting my, to my students that I go to church. I don't think that should no. be a hard thing. I st- like I'm on a podcast, a Catholic <laughs> yeah. podcast. Like this is not something that I'm trying to hide, but just admitting it to it, like almost feeling ashamed that I go to church on a regular Sunday mass. Like that, not not feeling ashamed, but feeling pressure to feel ashamed. If that makes sense. Mm. Um, now I easily, oh, I'm a good Catholic boy. I go like that's a, that's something that I just made sure that I don't feel uncomfortable doing now. I had to make that decision though that I was just going to be open and, and, and talk about it. Um, and, and I do, and I, sh- I share that yeah. with my students. I have a crucifix on the wall. Just putting a crucifix on my wall in my office has sparked multiple conversations, which is amazing. Um, just by putting that simple crucifix on the wall, students come and start talking to me, and, 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 and it's awesome. But for me, I'm not doing a lot different. <laughs> I'm living up yeah. my faith. God is, I, I'm, I am offering up my day in the morning and saying, hey, God, you send whoever you need to my way, and hopefully I can send them to you. Like that's like... Use me as your instrument. You know what I mean? And that's a prayer that I do open up with. So if you're opening up with that prayer and then God starts using you, well, then you got to you gotta start. You got to step up. You got to. Yeah. I, I think we and, underestimate how much we really have to journey with people. Yeah. 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 Like even I look at, you know, we do so much work with youth ministry, you know, and even some of our best faithful kids. Yeah. You know, after a little while, you, you, like me, I start to think, wow, these these kids got it. Like now they're leaders. And then all of a sudden, it's they like, do something. You're like, but what? <laughs> it's a yeah. sharp change in them, and it, it always reminds me how much we have to journey. And those are those are teenagers. Those are young people. But all of us, mm-hmm. you know, all of us have to journey with each other. Yeah. Like uh, Christians on Sunday, if we, if we have to journey with them. Like, you know, I see people get in fights in the parking lot right after mass or whatever yeah. it is. You, you journey with each other. Be good examples. You can't turn somebody. You're not going to convince somebody to be that. That you're not going to convince somebody of color TV. <laughs> If they're only seeing black and white, exactly. As a stranger, yeah, you can only do it by going and walking with them in the journey. And so a lot of times, that journey is not shoving it down their throat twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah exa- that's what I was going to say. That like you want to be a witness of of your faith, and you want to be an honest <laughs> witness. Um, but you want to be an effective witness. Yeah. That's um, you know you and and it's it's tough because you have that balance of like you, you don't want you don't want to be shy, but you don't want to be weird. Yeah, like yeah. no, no, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. but like on, on on the shy side, yeah. it's like you should be um, willing to talk about your faith in the same way or even more so than you're excited to talk about anything else that you're interested in Absolutely. or anything that's important in your life. Yeah. It's like, but you, we we don't like we don't overthink, you know, talking about our kids to other people. Cause it's like, it's a central and important move. Like my, my kid said this crazy thing and whatever, but like, I I don't have this, like, they don't have kids to that. Like, are they judging me for having kids? And like, you don't, don't yeah, you don't, you don't over, like you just talk about the things you're excited about. Because it's your identity. It's who you are. It's it's like a significant, we love that, right? We love our kids. And, and often we show people immediately in the first short time that we're, yeah. we meet someone new, we reveal what we love, yeah. right? So we reveal that we have a spouse or children or whatever it might be that we love, that we reveal that about ourselves yeah. to someone because that's who we identify as and that's mm, what yeah. we're revealing. Yeah. That's good call. But we don't do that with our faith. Yeah. Faith and is like, faith barely comes out if it does. Yeah. Well, and I think like, um, because because people have been weird about it, that like we we, we yeah. want to we want to err on that side because we don't want to be that person who's shouting their faith at someone else or um, communicating in a way that actually makes or like causes people to reject um, that idea. Um, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't know if we ever <laughs> like answered. I mean, I, I knew I, we weren't going to answer the question today. Like, I've been wrestling with this in my own mind for. A while. I, I think it's a something that we have to like flesh out a little bit, right? Yeah. Like 
it's not there's no one answer you can't say do this yeah. and the people in your lives who aren't practicing their faith are going to come on board you can't say that right there's, but yeah. i think we mentioned a few things that are highlights yeah. like there's a, witness yeah, yeah. <laughs> witness like, fully witness fully. fully yeah right yeah through, um, your, through your actions through your through the way you live and b like maybe be bold with our invitation yeah and there's no formula there's like no there's formula. no formula to like journeying We're, with people and, and journey, be, being there for people when they experience crisis or they're yeah. you know after years of having conversations and not getting through to them until something happens to <laughs> Yeah. spark the question in their mind that was the thing i was thinking when you when you mentioned that was we aren't the ones we can journey with them our, our yeah. job is to be disciples we're not the savior yeah and so our job is to journey with them and to show them when there's a chance we can help be the roadmap yeah. but we aren't the way the truth and the life god yeah. is and so we have to like we can be there and we can pray for them we can offer them up all the time yeah. and then but when that spark happens they know who they can turn to yeah. They're not completely lost. Yeah, they and have a guy sure. in light. And, in, and invest in those who are asking those questions. Yeah. You know, which aren't always the people that we may want uh, to invest in. Well, no, no, and or even just like no, like you could spend you know uh, an evening you yeah. know trying to fact check the internet and you know correct everyone who's wrong in the comment section of whatever. Yeah. So or you know you can miss the person right in front of you, or you can go to RCIA. Yeah, and right. have a conversation with people who are actually asking questions. Yeah. Honestly, go to an alpha group or Christ yeah. life or something yeah. like that and, and, and actually talk about those questions. Yeah. All right. We're way over time. So we okay. uh, have to wrap up here. But, uh, you know, I'm interested. Like we all have stories about people that we're trying to reach out to and we're <laughs> we're struggling. We all have opportunities we've missed. We've all have opportunities that we've tried and failed, tried oh, and yeah. succeeded. So maybe uh, for those of you listening, maybe you can share some of those stories with us. Uh, tell us about a time maybe you shared and failed, shared and succeeded. Maybe there's a struggle you have with someone at home, someone in your social uh, circle that uh, you're not really sure what to do with in terms of sharing your faith with them. So drop us a line and ask us at thecatholicbuzz.com or leave us a comment on our Facebook or Instagram pages. That's all the time we got. So for Josh Sullivan and Matt Van Milligan, my name is Father Daniele. We'll see you next time on The Catholic Buzz. Mm-hmm.